Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 222 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, and this is the place to be for proven practical tips and advice on growing a successful membership business. Today, I want to talk all about moving from a service business to a membership business business. So a service business where you're typically working with clients and customers on a one-to-one basis. So that's obviously a place that we were in with our own business. Firstly, I uh, was freelance. I ran my own uh, web design and online marketing business from about 2005, 2006. And then uh, Callie and myself got into business and ran an agency for a number of years before starting the membership guys. So this is a journey. It's a transition that we've been through. And it's certainly one that I know a lot of people who we talk to who are currently in service businesses are looking ahead to. So they're wanting to move to the membership model. And there are many, many different reasons people are attracted to the membership model and want to make that move. But the most compelling for us is just how dramatically different recurring revenue makes your business compared to one-off transactional revenue that you typically get when servicing clients on a one-to-one basis. Recurring revenue is a game changer in terms of what it actually means for your business, the stability, predictability, reliability, and how that totally changes the way that you feel about running your business, uh, the way that you look at the way your business operates, all that sort of stuff. It's totally night and day recurring revenue compared to uh, revenue from servicing clients one-on-one. And this is particularly true if you're a one-man band where you are solely responsible for the delivery of what you sell. So maybe you're a web developer, a business coach, a graphic designer, a marketing consultant, or anyone else who works with clients one-on-one or even in small groups. In a lot of cases with those types of businesses, The uncomfortable truth is your business is holding you back. So today I want to explain why the membership model is is far superior in many ways to offering one-to-one services and give you some pointers on how you can start incorporating memberships and subscriptions into your own business and potentially transition over from service business to membership business. So first and foremost, what's all wrong with offering services to clients? Don't get me wrong, I'm not completely trashing service-based businesses. Heck, I ran one for over a decade. But the problem with this sort of business is that you are its point of weakness. Often, you're trading time for money, selling your particular set of skills to whoever will pay. And if you go down, your business goes down with you. Not feeling too good today? Tough luck, you've got a deadline to hit. Want to take time off to hang out with friends? Well, that's fine, just as long as you're okay with not getting paid this month. Remember that old boss that you couldn't stand working for? Well, now you have a dozen of them. They're called clients, and your business lives or dies on their whims. Now, of course, this is painting a deliberately bleak picture, but you get my point. Maybe your clients are the best in the world. Maybe they're amazing, patient, fun to work with, and they always pay you on time. They're never getting your nerves. They're never demanding. Even then, let me ask you, are you fulfilled? Do your clients challenge you and enable you to really flex your muscles, to really tap in to the full wealth of skills and knowledge that you know that you have in your arsenal? Or do you find yourself forever in first gear? repeatedly doing the same menial tasks simply because that's what people want to pay for. You're a bit like a gourmet chef who's stuck flipping burgers in McDonald's. There are a few things as frustrating for a business owner than the feeling of being underappreciated and underutilized. Tax bills, invoices not being paid, demanding clients, those can be dealt with. But never really, really reaching your full potential and really getting to flex your muscles and do your best work, that's a different kettle of very depressed fish. So again, by trading time for money, by being on that treadmill, you're always going to potentially hit a brick wall because you are limited by your capacity to grind out billable hours. That makes you 
a point of weakness, a bottleneck for your business. And even if you want to scale, even if you decide, okay, we're going to take this service business and I'm just going to start outsourcing more work to subcontractors. Even then, if the product you are selling is essentially time for money, you're always going to be on that treadmill. And all those other issues that we talk about, a lack of fulfillment, not being able to flex your muscles, problem clients, all that sort of stuff, they just get compounded more and more the bigger your business gets. So if any of this is sounding familiar, let me talk a bit about how the membership model changes things and what the advantages are of switching to a membership-based business. First of all, memberships give you better leverage. If you create a membership website around a specific topic, this enables you to make the most of all the knowledge, experience, skills, and expertise that you have in your toolkit. You're in control. Whether you're offering e-learnings or courses, tutorials, or whatever, or a coaching program or a community, you get to tap into the full extent of your toolkit and share it with others. You decide what content you're going to create. You decide which topics you're going to cover. I've lost count how many amazing designers who I got to know during my time running an agency who were so bored and unfulfilled because all anybody ever wanted to hire them for was to design boring corporate business cards, letterheads and compliment slips. They never got to do anything fun because they were never in control over how their skill set, how their knowledge, experience and expertise were utilized. With a membership you're in control. You can better leverage all that stuff in your arsenal. Memberships, of course, we talked about the recurring revenue. The stability that comes from recurring, accumulating revenue is a game changer. Having hundreds of members paying you a small fee every month makes it a far less volatile source of income than relying on a small number of clients. It also means you stop trading time for money and instead focus on building an asset that will continuously grow in value. Again, if you've got six clients who are the main source of all of your revenue and one of those clients decides they no longer want to work with you, that can make a major impact on your business and on your life. But if you've got 600 members and 10 of them decide they no longer want to be in your membership, then yeah, okay, it sucks losing members, but that's not going to make a dent in your business. You have a lot more cliff to walk back on when you're running a membership because of what recurring revenue and accumulating revenue does for you. Memberships are also far less pressure and far more flexible as businesses. By ditching those crazy clients with demanding deadlines, you take full control of your business and you're no longer subject to others. You choose when you work, where you work, and what you work on. You get to set the terms. Now, there's a lot of people out there who are selling this fantasy of passive income that memberships will somehow enable you to kick back on a beach sipping cocktails as this money just magically appears in your bank account. So let's get it straight. When I talk about memberships being less pressure, more flexibility, no longer time for money, all that sort of stuff, I'm not trying to give you this impression that you won't need to work. Successful memberships still need hard work, but it's work on your terms. And it's work that can be far more fulfilling and rewarding than servicing clients. So if you want to move into the membership space, where do you get started? Well, there's essentially two ways to go if you're moving from a client services business into a membership-based businesses. The first of those is to create a membership site related to your area of business. So the market or the niche or the industry that you are currently in. The second option is to create a membership that's related to a hobby or a passion that is completely unrelated to your business. Now, in many ways, that latter option is the path of least resistance, since it will be a completely separate project to your day-to-day business. That's what the kids today are calling a side hustle. However, if you're creating a membership that's related to what you do for a living, your area of expertise that your service business is currently centered around, and your aim is to move away from client work, then the first thing that you need to do is to identify and explore the opportunities that already exist within your services business that would be most suited to the membership model. 
So identify the most common elements of what you currently offer. What services are you most frequently asked for? What questions do your clients most commonly ask? What problems are you continuously hired to solve? Figuring out the most universal aspects of what it is you offer on a service basis and what your clients want and need is a great starting point for identifying opportunities to create a membership product. Remember, You don't sell web design, you don't sell business coaching, graphic design, social media training. That's not what you sell. You sell solutions to problems. Everything else is just noise. It's fluff. So what are the biggest and most common problems that your existing client base have that you provide a solution to? If you can identify those problems, and more importantly, if those problems are recurring problems, recurring needs, then those are problems that you could potentially solve within a paid membership. So identify the most common elements of what you currently offer. Boil it down to problems and solutions. In your service business, you currently solve a problem in one particular way, but you could look to solve that same problem through a membership model instead. So start off by looking at that. Next, take a look at whether there are any unique elements or assets that you have access to within your existing business. So have you created or developed anything unique to your business that others couldn't offer? If you're a designer, have you created any graphics that maybe you could bundle up into templates and give to your members? If you're a website developer, have you created site templates, WordPress plugins, or software that again, you could offer inside a membership? As a consultant, coach, or trainer, do you have any unique programs or processes or intellectual property that you use with your clients? And if you haven't created anything like this, could you? These are the kind of things that you can use as either unique offerings that make a part of your monthly subscription for your membership, or they can act as starting points for developing things like courses. If you use a particular process that you take all of your clients through, could you actually create a course that follows that same process to enable people to self-study in order to solve their problem? Next thing to look at is what do your clients need before, during, and after they've worked with you? Often, when providing services on a one-to-one basis, we find ourselves only delivering one piece of the puzzle. Clients typically don't realize they need any of the other stuff. Sometimes time or budget get in the way, and there are just some things that don't fit your current business model. You can't always solve every possible need someone may have on their journey. So you need to zoom out a little bit and think about the whole picture, the entire journey. Look at the specific problem you're currently solving and expand it in both directions. Looking at the broader scope of things, as well as breaking that journey down into smaller, more specific milestones, steps, and topics. Try and mind map every aspect of what someone working with you may need in terms of solutions and support, both before, during, and after you provided your particular service. This will open up a wealth of areas that you could build your membership around. So perhaps if you're a web developer, perhaps the service you provide is getting someone's website up and running. What do they need once they have a website? How are they going to get people visiting the site? What can they do to increase their sales, to improve their lead generation, conversion rates, and stuff like that? These are all needs that perhaps aren't being serviced by you and your business that you could look to bring a membership in to actually give people the tools, the resources, the education, and the support to help them to progress further in their journey than you're currently helping them with right now in your service business. So think about that entire picture, the whole journey, what problems people have at the various stages that currently aren't being solved by yourself, and that will help you identify some ideas and opportunities where you could potentially come in with a membership offering. Another way of coming up with ideas for uh, potential membership solutions is to think about what you would have wanted when you were starting your business. Because so far, we've mostly looked at finding a way of serving your existing customer base better with a membership. However, there could be a huge opportunity in creating something for your peers too. Often when people start their own business, they do so because they have a particular skill or a passion. And in a lot of cases, 
That is the driving force behind their business. They don't start their business because they are good at business. They start because they're good at coaching or they're good at uh, carpentry or they're good at design. They don't start out necessarily with any business or marketing skills. So you could maybe leverage your experience that you've gained in running your own business to help others who are just starting out. So rather than starting a membership that helps people to learn how to play guitar, you start a membership that helps people, other people in your industry to start a business that helps other people play guitar, right? So you're teaching the teachers. It's just an alternative approach, an alternative opportunity to create a membership that helps people start a business in your market rather than a membership that caters directly to your market itself. So those should give you some ideas of where to start looking in terms of brainstorming topics or opportunities for memberships. So if you made that decision that you want to move your service business towards a membership model and you've identified opportunities for what that membership would look like, how do you get started? Okay, so we're going to cover some of the first steps for making that transition. First and foremost, survey your current clients and audience. It's always good to start with what you already have, so it makes sense to get some initial feedback from your existing clients and contacts. Get in touch with current and past clients, run your idea past them and see what they think. Idea validation is a key part of the membership planning process. It's something that we bang the drum about constantly on this podcast. So you need to make sure that you're actually doing the research and you're actually getting some feedback and validation from your audience before you start to really put your plan of action together. And who better to get that initial feedback than people who've already put their hand in their pocket and paid you to solve their problems. So first step in planning out that transition towards a membership model, survey your current clients and audience. Secondly, consider starting by offering a makeshift version of your idea as an add-on service or a supplementary service to what you're already doing day to day. Again, going back to what we said before, all we are doing here is providing solutions two problems. If you can deliver something close to your membership idea that solves the same set of problems without needing to actually create the membership itself, then that's a great way to lay the groundwork to future developments. So if you plan to offer training within your membership, then right now you could start by offering one-to-one or small group training to your existing clients. You could do a one-hour training session with a client. If you're going to be providing member-only tools and resources in your membership, try selling them as premium add-ons for people who you're currently working with. Again, solving the same problems in a similar way, tapping in to the service set that you currently have going on within your business. Not only will this help you to shape your eventual membership offering, it's also a great way of validating that your idea is viable. And we talked more about creating that sort of minimum viable product back in episode 219. So that's the membershipguys.com slash 219, where we talk about creating an MVP to test and validate your idea. You can really, really uh, do that very effectively effectively by creating that MVP as an add-on or a supplementary service for your current client base. You can trial this for a few months as an optional add-on when someone hires you as a coach, someone hires you as a trainer, and so on. Next step, you want to start generating leads and gathering your audience together. If you're not already investing effort into generating leads and building your email list, then now's the time to start. You're going to need an audience and a following when you open the doors to your membership. Otherwise, you're going to launch to the sound of crickets. Build it and they will come is not a valid strategy here. So make sure you're doing lead generation, you're creating content, you're getting people subscribed to your email list. Start blogging, grow your social media following, incentivize people to join your mailing list and start building your audience. This will put you in a far greater position to really accelerate your membership plans. Start getting consistent with putting out quality content that proves your expertise and starts getting more and more people exposed to you, your ideas and wanting more so that when the time comes for you to offer them a membership site, they're going to jump at the chance to learn more directly from you. 
And then the final step in getting everything in place and getting ready to make this transition is to set a deadline and commit to a specific amount of time per week that you're going to utilize in pursuit of making your membership happen. Once you've decided that you want to move away from client services and into running a membership site, the most important thing is to take action. Decide on a deadline by which you want to launch your membership site. Put it in the diary. Be realistic, recognize the fact that, of course, if you're researching and validating your idea and you're building your audience and this, that, and the other, you're not going to get that done in a week. So you need to be realistic about it. Give yourself three to six months, set it in stone and work towards it. Once you've got that deadline in place, commit to spending a fixed amount of time every week or even every day in service of this goal. Consider yourself and this project in the same way that you would a client. So you become a client project. You are your most important client. Prioritize your membership plans in the same way you would prioritize an important client. You don't make excuses. You don't put it to one side. You don't push it to the bottom of the list. Someone wants to arrange a meeting during the hour that you have set aside for your membership. You don't jig things around. That hour is taken in the same way it would be if your most important client wanted to meet you for a coffee that day. Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Take action and make sure that your plans don't fall to the bottom of your to-do list. Now, of course, we're extremely biased, but having gone through this transition from running a service business to running a business that is entirely centered around the membership model, we absolutely prefer the membership model. It is far superior in so, so many ways, mainly for its ability to enable you to create a more stable, scalable, and overall more fulfilling business than a one where you're solely responsible for delivering a service to clients, selling time for money. Successful memberships require work, but it's rewarding work that's done on your terms. The opportunities and inspiration for creating a membership website are already there within your business. And hopefully from today's episode, you've now got some ideas of what you need to do in order to be able to identify them. But the most important thing, once you've decided to transition the membership model, is to start taking action. And of course, you head over to themembershipguys.com. We have a whole bunch of free resources and tools that will enable you to actually start the ball rolling and to make sure that the steps you're taking are the right ones. So do make sure you check those out. All right, that is it from me for this week. Hopefully, if you're someone who is trading time for money, you're running a client service business and you've been trying to figure out how you might move to the membership model, then I do hope that today's episode has given you a little bit of food for thought and an extra little nudge in the right direction. And of course, you can always get more answers, more insights and more help over in our free Facebook group. Uh, If you search for Membership Mastermind on Facebook, you should find our group or type talkmemberships.com into your browser. That'll redirect you through some magic directly to our group. We've got over 13,000 membership site owners in there. They, a lot of those have made this journey that we're talking about, and I'm sure they'll be only too happy to chime in with their own experiences there. All right, that is it from me. I'll be back again next week with another episode of the Membership Guys podcast. See you then. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be, or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks, and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership website. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.